Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Get Out of Rap. This is a long overdue part two uh, with my friend David Holmes, who is the Director of Operations at Cigna. David came on before and we said, let's, right, we, we haven't, we, we've not got enough time, so we need, to, we need to carry this conversation on. And as I'm sure a lot of you listening can relate to, our calendars are a thing of nightmares. So it's mm-hmm. taken us this long to get back to part two. David, thanks very much for coming back on and being so patient. Ah, oh, thanks for having me back on. I mean, I think we, when we set this up initially, I was going to going to do it for Gran Canary, and I loved the idea of of doing it when I was on holiday. But you, your calendar getting away, and then I was like, yeah, I might as well just have a beer and sit in the hot tub. So glad to be here finally on on today in in a more familiar environment. No, oh, well, thanks very much. Yeah, that would have been great, wouldn't it? Just sat by the side of the <laughs> pool with a beer. I'd have been far more relaxed. I could have told you anything, Martin. You could have asked me <laughs> for the financials or something. I'd have probably just told you, you know. Now, to take us back, where did we sort of finish up on the on the first episode? Yeah, I think I think you know what I think we had a, we had a really great conversation, Martin, and it's actually great for me just reminiscing, if you like, about some some of the the, the, the most fun times I've had in in, in the industry, particularly being a contact centre agent, how I sort of made that transition into a team leader, the great support and and, and I just the wonderful experience I had in Direct Line B. We then sort of kind of accelerated through about 15 years of my career to say, yeah, I worked here, I worked here, I worked here, I did a bit of this. Um, and, and such is my journey line, there's so many stories I can do. So we probably, we were tapering off RBS, I was sort of coming out, um, the team leader community and, and getting to a space of sort of leading leaders. And, and, and I think I've said to you before, even privately we're exchanging messages or supporting each other's posts I think that first line leader community and, and, and finding your way into that role and, and, and learning mm. and growing and surviving even at times yeah. but also how do you how do you work with it but also and I think this will be really the case is there'll be a lot of people listening who it might be their first role leading a leader you know and I think as, as there's a nice sort of transition where we finished the last time and I'm happy to share about my experience the good the bad and the ugly if you like of what went well for me, and I, I guess some things I definitely do different if I had my time back, and and um hopefully it's stuff that's useful to the listeners and they can get some benefit. And for me, I get the benefit of reminiscing and back in the days when there was less grey and, and 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 less paunch, you know. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> and me both, sir, because um, <laughs> yeah, similarly grey, similarly paunch, but also similarly that um you're right. Me and you both talk a lot about. Uh, team leaders in that first step into leadership and it's great now to start talking about then the next step for a lot of people is into that kind of contact center manager or the different terminology out there that exists but essentially you are now managing uh, leaders You're, you're managing team managers team leaders um, and that equally we've often overlook it I guess don't we that equally is quite a large step to take. Massive, massive. And it's it, it's really quite scary. I mean, if you think back yourself, man, and take that first team leader job, you're equally proud and equally thinking, I have no idea what I'm doing. Because really, it, I think some businesses are really crushing it now. And, and, and certainly when I left RBS, they had a better way of doing it. But most people way back in the day when they first get their team leader job was because they were good at the job they did. And somebody was, and you had a good attitude because <laughs> you can't need a place attitude, right? But I think a lot of the time you get lifted because you were good at it and you got a shot at being a team leader. So there wasn't a good training infrastructure. So when you get that first team leader job, you're winging it a little bit, right? You're hoping mm. for the best. You're hoping mm. that you get it right. And you try to do all the things and middle of the things that made you successful while sort of magpieing what you're learning from about you and, and, and those, those run about you. It's the same when you move into that leading leader. So you, it's almost the same sort of analogy and that you, you work from a group that we your peer group to, to, to leading them. So it becomes even lonelier. So if the move to being an advisor to being a team leader is lonely, it gets even more bloody lonely as you move <laughs> yeah. up from being a, 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 into a leader of leaders. And, and I think certainly my experience of it was that there was limited opportunity to, to do anything official to learn how to do that. So, so my, First opportunity to sort of do that was um, in the contact centre. It was probably near the tail of my RBS career and its continuance. And it, it was a, it was four team leaders I think I had at the time. And and um, it was in a call centre that was 
I remember going in there with the boss at the time. I think I maybe mentioned it last time. You, you fixed up for the carpet, you know, and, and, and we built our own tables. I went in and washed the windows because I'd been reading about the broken windows effects at the time and stuff like that. And, you know, it was a great learning environment because it was not too big that it, it got away from me at the time. Mm, yeah. um, and it was simple enough in the transition. It was a very sort of limited store carb environment. So kind of took payments. We call it sort of serviced accounts. It was quite easy to manage. But again, and, and, and this is the bit you don't know later, we, we built our own planning model on a spreadsheet. You know, we had one guy who was good, and we, we, we spoke about this before. We, we had one guy who was brilliant in database, and then we helped him operationalize what we needed, and we built in the breaks and stuff. And you, you learn the mechanics of it, but you also learn how to get the best for your people on the spot. Yeah, yeah. Nobody really prepares you for that, but also nobody prepares you. And I think one of the things that's different from being a team leader to a leader of leaders in that first sort of stage, that middle management, is the types of meetings you're going to and what to expect. Yeah. Um, I, I, and I don't think, Martin, as a team leader, I don't think I was affected as much by other people's egos as I was when I first then moved into like managing managers. And you start sitting in the room and there's a little bit of jostling, there's a little bit of um, positioning in terms of where people want to see themselves and how they're viewing. Listen, that was an eye opener for me, right? I, I had no idea of, of of what that was because, for the life of me, I I, I am and I I try and continue to be this kind of guy. Is like you don't get different versions of me, mm. you know. As what, yeah. what I write in LinkedIn is what I would say. I mean, probably yeah. the less swearing, right? And and even <laughs> on this, I'm I'm I've been I have a mindfulness not to to to, to swear, right? Because because um. Somebody once said, I read it somewhere, that people who swear are more honest. And I thought, that's my excuse, right? But yes. it's not an excuse. Uh, that's, that's what I use. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, 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 and there's a lot of my background sales, and we tend to be a bit rough and ready without yeah. diminishing any other salespeople out there. But I think um, nobody, nobody really gives you that sort of, um, by the way, here's what you watch out for. You, you kind of got to listen and learn. And, and I think for me, and, and, and having some of the bravado that I can have at times is, I just, I just sometimes jumped in with a size nine, you know, and mm. before I know it, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a bit of feedback, <laughs> you know, about well, this is maybe how you might conduct yourself, and I, and and I remember thinking, why didn't you tell me that before I went in? And and one of the things I'd say to anybody listening who's in that type of role or just moved into it is get really clear expectations from from your boss about what they want, you know, what do they want for you when they ask you along your stuff? If they say you're just there to observe, just go and observe. You know, don't need to try and prove yourself, you know, at that point. Learn before you jump in. Um, if your boss is like, look, I want you to contribute, ask them to be specific, Martin. Mm. You know, exactly mm. as it would you want me to do, other than... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, you, you and I have both been there. Somebody's like, I want you to come along and, and just add some value. What does that mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what? In my head, yeah. I'm adding value. Any meeting I go to, but not everybody thinks that, Martin, right? Yeah. So I, I just think um, the things that I wish I'd known then, I know now is... Well, exactly what do you want? How do you want me to play it? Where is your position in this? Because I tell you, another thing you learn very quickly is you don't want to be diametrically opposed to your boss in the room. <laughs> you want to keep yeah. that private, you know? And, and, and I've found myself in those situations where my boss is drawing me daggers from across a room, you know? And, and you're just thinking, oh no, I, I should have had a conversation with that, even, even with experience. So these are things I would give away for nothing, but coming through that, that, that sort of kind of that's that contact center then and growing into a team that had six team leaders reporting into me and dealing with that bit where and, and I mean it in the nicest way, you're dealing with people who whose careers have more evolved. So so the level of thinking towards the business is, is stronger. That they're likely to have some 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 strong opinions, right? Mm. And, and and that's different from dealing with a team of 15 advisors, say for example, who maybe 10 of them just want to come in and do the job and go home. Mm. maybe two of them don't want to do the job but have stayed <laughs> a couple are high performers and you just don't need to speak to them at all and other than well done and, and make sure you keep that going along and then some random who always brings in something else the people who genuinely care about your business understand that will probably at times be more of an expert than you are yes and um but but sometimes also when you make a decision for them you know so that, that's a tricky navigational pool and it i'm is. sure you've experienced it yourself you know well, you know, the what I loved, you know, the first point you made then about um, just having to go to, to meetings. And I think that is, 
let's start there because it's such a yeah. key it's such a key point i think most of us that have been team leaders i loved spending time with my team just being yeah. around them just interacting with them and then when you go to manage team leaders i think naively and to your point this it's about preparation naively i just thought right well my team leaders now uh, it's just that like i'm managing a smaller team uh, what I massively underestimated was the amount of time I had to spend away from them in meetings. Yeah. And then that's when you come into everything you just said then, which was absolutely spot on, because I would see those meetings uh, as a distraction, not as a distraction, but I was thinking, I just want to, why? I just want to be with my team leaders. Why am I in this meeting about? finance why am i in this meeting about health and safety why am i and that came across and i, 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 I <laughs> that that came across i was always very passionate about being the best i could be but i worked the, when i first became a contact center manager the end of the first sort of six months or whatever it just so happened we went into a cycle of doing 360 uh, yeah, reviews yeah. and my team loved my my team leaders scored me really high my peer group of which there were so i was one of five contact center managers we were a big big contact center mm -hmm. they my boss when she went through it with me said mm -hmm. you better sit that you know prepare yourself because i i scored as low as you could get when it came to my peers and when you went into the narratives that they wrote consistently they said at the end of every meeting I just ran literally ran off to go back to my team when in fact what they wanted to do was have a quick chat digest what had happened and they said it was I was just singularly focused on my team rather than to your point earlier understanding I would I used to call it the politics of yeah. and I was just even though my degree was in politics, I was naive to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty to good just there, Martin, yeah? Yeah, not at all. Uh, I was just naive to the fact, you know what, I have to establish relationships with my peer group. I have to be interested in when we're talking about the vending machines or when we're talking about another project that's coming on board, to be engaged and not just be thinking, oh, 10 more minutes and then I can get out of this meeting, you know. Um, and it was a massive eye-opener, massive. I think the thing you hit the nail on was I just wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared enough. Yeah, and like I, I, I'd probably assert that in, in many ways for all the step up that I've taken or moves to other businesses, I've never been prepared, right? So it's, um, some of that's good, right? Some of that's the yeah. attraction. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think there is a little bit of me is, is a bit masochistic, right? And must be i keep i keep throwing myself into these these, these big challenges these big hairy audacious challenges right <laughs> um and then sometimes when i'm in the middle i'm like why did i do that right i've, I've left this but it's in a really good space and i've came to this or i've tried something different but i think that's something ingrained about who you are as a, a person individual and, and i often find people who navigate their way through the career path particularly in contact centers have a bit of that in some way. We're all we're all a bit of it, yeah. and I think mm. there can be some natural competition in there as well. When harnessed the right way, makes a big difference in the support of way. And look, some of your feedback's not to someone, and and I would be surprised if there's not many of us out there with our types of careers that have not had the similar feedback. I mean, as a team leader, I remember going on an offsite one time and we had a feedback board, and um, I had no feedback on it, and I was gutted. Because I helped people, Martin, to your point. Mm -hmm. I, people needed something and I had an expertise in it. I'd give myself to it and I gave my time freely and all that sort of stuff. And because people had done that for me, I've spoken about that before. But what people told I eventually got a hold of somebody like, right, I need to deal with this, right? So I spoke to my boss and I'm like, well, speak to them, right? Clearly, and I'm like, well, thanks for the answer. And then right, off I went. And, and I spoke to somebody and went, David, the problem isn't that you won't listen to the feedback, the problem is that you'll defend your position. And, and, and actually, David, you'll defend your position really strongly, particularly to your point, as if it comes to your team. And and I, I regularly get that feedback in some capacity, in some way. And, and and where I've got to it, Martin, is I'm still going to be that way with my team, you know, and, and, and rightly or wrongly. And there's a few times I've done it 
I can sometimes get into a siege mentality when I'm a team uh, and put my arms around it and it's 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 there to look after them. Um I, I give trust quite easily and, and it takes a lot to take away from me. And when my team have my trust, I'll I'll do pretty much anything for them, you know, I'll give what I've got um as much as I can and and, and that comes off the wrong way with some people sometimes. Where I've kind of got to is, is I'm aware it's a strength and also a weakness. I'm in that space in my career now where I, I've got loads of weaknesses, right? Loads of things. I mean, I've got this attention span of a fish sometimes if it doesn't interest. <laughs> to your point, I know that loads of things are important like compliance and and, 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 and finance and health and safety and stuff. But I'm not jumping out of my bed with a spring in my step if I know that's the first thing in my calendar, right? Yeah, but yeah. I do know it's important. And I also understand my position now that those guys that are doing that for my benefit need my yeah, support and my yeah. understanding and, and enough that I can give them an, an hour undivided without saying I've had enough. It's too important. And, and you, you do learn that through experience to your point and you become a little less selfish with it. At the same time, Martin, and I would say it to anybody, really amplify your strengths. Don't overdial them so that if somebody says to you, ah, oh, you're really good at this and you're, you're walking about like you're John Travolta, right? And you're just like, oh, Christ, that's an old, that's an old reference. Isn't it? No, you're, we, you're walking we, about like you're, uh, <laughs> you're, like you're Justin Timberlake, right? Or, or somebody like that, right? You, you've, you're a bit gallus, as we'd say in Scotland. Um, you don't want to be that way as much as you can, but 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 value your strengths. And I think I had, particularly when, when it came to managing leaders, eventually you were evaluated to your point and get feedback and, and all that sort of stuff. And, I don't know. I, I think I wasted a chunk of my career focusing too much on trying to strengthen my weaknesses. You know, I, I think you need to be aware of them. I I can be unpurposefully, unpurposefully insensitive, you know, to your point. And I think an element of what you talked about there, Martin, is that sometimes I can upset somebody in the room. And I, I've done it just absent-minded sometimes, a wee bit of a lack of tact or subtlety on my part. Um, I've tried to defend it at times saying I'm a straight shooter and, and all that stuff, but it's not always defendable, right? Um, I, 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 and I think experience teaches you can be softer with it. If you've got a really strong allergic reaction, so to speak, to somebody else's point of view, you, you don't need to call that out publicly. You don't need to do it in a meeting room when you're round about other meeting rooms for, for point scoring. It does. It, it really serves you no value. And I had to learn that lesson the hard way, Mark. There was times where... I don't think I was trying to prove I was the smartest person in the room or the most. Uh, if, I, if I just didn't agree with you and you wound me up the wrong way, I would probably have a good. I'd, I'd be happy to take you have that debate. But I think, like we were, we were talking just before we started the call, I think some businesses um, and, and and the world at large, certainly in the politics space, has has become so polarizing. You know, if people are, are opposed to each other's opinion, we've lost the ability to to sort of debate it uh, organically. I think. I was taught, particularly in my leadership career, that if you don't understand somebody else's position, try and go away and find out for them why they hold that thought. You might not be able to challenge it or, or get them in a space where they think different, but it'll help you understand why they got there. Mm. You know, and I, there's lots of things in the world I don't agree with. I don't agree with what's happening with women in America and some of the decisions that they're making. I can't influence it and I'm not qualified to talk about it then. But I can at a high level say that that's just wrong, right? Yeah. If I'm honest, if I look at our country at the moment, and long, long time ago, I was a shop steward when I worked at the airport. I think I maybe mentioned that the last time. Um, so I still hold that wee bit about doing what's right for people, irrespective of the yeah. job that I do. Mm. And I watch people like Mick Lynch just just crushing it because he knows his numbers, he knows his facts. Versus people, and rightly or wrongly, I have an opinion on that. I think they're quite privileged. I think they take that privilege for granted. Um, and and this disconnected way with people in the front line you know I, I think we, we live in a really curious and interesting time in the world and and, and I hope because hope's important right <laughs> I hope that we come through it the right way both from a business perspective where I think a lot of businesses are, 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 are now having to wrestle with the fact that hybrid working is here to stay I think mm -hmm. they're having to wrestle with the fact that we're, we're going through a period of hyperinflation so we've it's right that we do the right thing by employees, but keep the business yeah, on the sure. on the road and the, the, the big decisions for that. But what I don't think is helpful is, and dare I say it, and get myself into potential bother, the big companies really profiteering. You know, I, I don't agree mm. with that as a principle. Mm. I, I agree as a principle, Martin, that companies should be able to make money. 
right? That's yeah. that's the purpose of a business. Otherwise, you wouldn't have a business and with have less employment, right? Nobody needs that. But I think at what point is it enough? You know, and at what point is is one individual within a certain amount? So I I think that we're in a space where we're going to examine them as as as, as cultures. And I know I'm off the beaten track, right? But I think when you break no, it right back, I, mm-hmm. I I think that when you break it right back as leaders in businesses. We, we, we have a responsibility, you know, just to, to try and help people level up and, and, and share their experiences, particularly at this point in time, but also share their opinions and stuff. I think too, too many people become too bland on it. You know, oh, we'll see what happens. Well, OK, I'd rather you disagreed with me with the other end of the spectrum, but explained it to me and helped me understand versus you said nothing and privately just never ever changed your opinion. You know, I, 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 I remember at EE, and this is where I'm going with it, is, when I end up probably taking my first proper big job, if you like, in terms of being a, a sort of ops manager and, and leading like 120 people, if you like, with, with 16 leaders, um, they, they used to have a thing, it was T-Mobile at first, and they used to have a thing, strong, opi- strong opinions, loosely held. And I loved that, right? I loved the concept of you're allowed to have this really kind of, ah, I really care about this, I'm really passionate, I've got this, this whole piece. But some of the challenges are you're willing to change your mind, mm. you know. And yeah. it, it takes a lot to change my mind, Martin. I'm not going to lie, right? It, it, you need to come at me. But I, I, again, and, and this is what I've definitely learned is I would describe myself as um, a pragmatic optimist who operates in the activist space, right? So I, I like doing things and learning by doing. What I've had to learn, and, 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 and particularly when you first start managing leaders, is to to try and actively listen, and that's not always my strength. I try and actively listen, but also reflect more, you know. So, I, and teams that have came to work with me will sometimes realize I'll have an immediate reaction. Mm. You know, I'll, I'll share mm. my thoughts pretty quickly. I, I, I think mm-hmm. through these things pretty quickly. But what I've often found myself doing is, as my career's progressed, is saying, you know, I did, I took, I thought about that a bit more, you know, since we spoke. And, and actually, I'm going to change my mind on it. Let, let's try this. And, and I would say, how much better would the world be if we did a bit of that? But also, I think if, if you're in that space where you're leading leaders, I think your team will respect you more if you go back and you go, I know I made that call, but I've thought about what, what we Joe told me. And, and actually, that's not left me. And I think it would be worthwhile trying it. What do you want to do? And, and sort of exploring it. And, and we've lost the ability to do that a wee bit, I think, Martin. I think things have become more directive. They've become more polarised. And I see components of it in different businesses. I've seen it. You know, um, I worked with a business not so long ago um, where it, it, it was one person's opinion. You know, that's that's not good, right? It's not healthy. No. Mm. Um, and, and even when I'd done a wee bit of consulting on some stuff, I remember giving a bit of advice and this company was spending a shed load of money, right? So I just try to think about the way I word this so I don't get myself in any trouble, right? Um, they were spending so much money and, and I'd went away and done, I, I like a wee bit of math now and again, right? Just to, to, to qualify the argument. And I think it's about making sure the argument isn't built on fresh air. It's built on fact and science and everything that goes with it. But it's also not using data for data sake. You know, it's based on foundation, but it's not just there. And I'd looked at the numbers and I went, you're spending this to generate that. At what point do you think you're going to run out of money? And, and and that wasn't the answer somebody wanted to hear, right? <laughs> yeah, so I, I bet. I, 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 and, and so I stopped doing that. <laughs> and so I was asked to stop doing that. But I think um, there's a lot in that. And, and, and I know I have said a lot within it, but I think when you start thinking about it, whether it's you as a leader in your company, don't lose your passion for it. Don't lose your ability to, to, to at least try and understand somebody else's mm. point. And I think when you lead leaders for the first time, you're challenged to do that yeah I believe fundamentally you're challenged to do it because if you're lucky and I was taught the value of this by a mentor before is you'll you'll recruit leaders that are not just like you because we're we're, I I guess we've got the unconscious bias to go and recruit people that are like us right Mm. you know you're all coming ah you're brilliant Mm. yeah I'm looking at me five years ago you're brilliant Um, yeah and, and and it's actively going out your way to find people where you're willing to be challenged by them because mm. it makes you it makes you better, but also it gives you better outcomes. I um that the 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 point at the end. And by the way, on all of the kind of um, social stuff, I'm 
I'm I'm here for that, and I'm fully fully with you on that. I think um, we've, if you're in a position of power, privilege, or have responsibility, the whole if you're not using that to raise others up, there's something wrong, and that that goes for businesses as well. You know, it's kind of yeah. like you say, profit for profit's sake, rather than making a difference to your community and the people that work for you and their families is just amoral. It's just wrong. Yeah. Anyway. The bit, you, you, when you were talking then about um, having, what, what I heard is pausing, reflecting and being open-minded, right? So yep. I, I can remember the, the team leaders that I first started to manage, one of, again, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a mistake, I, I would call it more of a, it's a learning, is that I would, I had team leaders that were vet, that operated very different to me in terms of the tasks that they had to complete and how they interacted with their team. Mm -hmm. And it was a frustration to start with because like you just said then, I, I, I thought, right, I, I know what works. This is how I want you to manage. This is the order in which I want you to structure your day and manage your team. And I, I learned through that not working that actually there was a nice compromise, which is we agreed on three fundamental things that happened, had to happen in the day, but they could happen at any point in the day. And actually, people, there was one guy in particular, I just never felt like he was warm enough with, it, with his team. Uh, you know, he didn't, he didn't seem to smile as much as he should. He didn't seem to engage with them and motivate them and cajole them and and actually it came about through various discussions with him but then predominantly with his team his team were just happened to be a bit more introverted a bit more analytical and they loved uh his style of of management they would have hated my style uh and it was kind of like that was a real learning experience for me because i was thinking right it's you don't have this I did like cut like a cutter carbon copy like here's how you manage Bosch everyone do it this way this uniform approach it just it it doesn't work um, and being more respectful and learning more and being more open minded to how my team leaders manage their teams was a, was a key learning for me and and that kind of ties in with your 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 very valid point around just observing just listening it's quite hard when you're an operator <laughs> yeah it, 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 it's not my favorite thing to do Martin. right and <laughs> i i am easily distractible and and people who know me really well if they want something off me they know how to do it right so i've got a card that i've not even took it down for, for, for my daughter it says um to dad from your daughter thanks for loving me despite the fact i keep you on the edge of financial disaster <laughs> right, which, which yeah. I really love because it's so true. You know, she yeah. she, she she understands how to play me, and she 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 kind of move it about and stuff like that. And it was her. I was at the Eagles concert the other week, which is brilliant, right? That the two is there, and we, I mean, it's probably the first concert I've been to where people walk down the stairs with sticks and stuff like that. You know, it's <laughs> interesting. Glenn Hoddle was there, one of my heroes. Ah, like I mean, was it the, the Murray one, band. or was he yeah, down yeah, in Liverpool? His... I'm not sure. I know the Eagles is his favourite band, and I saw him say that he was off to an Eagles concert. He, he played, I think they played um, Hyde Park, to be honest. It might be down that neck of the woods if it's mm. horrible, but uh, great football player. That's a different conversation about stuff. Yeah. Football, right? <laughs> I, think, um, I, I think in terms of, uh, look, listening has never been my strength. If you asked to do the whole listening exercise, where would you rate yourself? I think I'd operate between a five and a six. I think I take more in from, from a written perspective. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take it there. And I do hear people, and, and a great bit of feedback somebody gave me, and I, and I love little lines that helps me remember. Um, somebody says, people will listen to you, David, but they don't always hear you. Or the, mm. or the best ways that they hear you, but they don't listen. It, it depends mm. which way you want to take it. Yeah. But the point is, sometimes to get your message across, you do need to say it five or six times. So the other point about it is, most people don't actively listen anymore. They just don't. We're everything competing for our time. Now, I don't doubt you're a bit like me. Sometimes you can be on a call, you'll be looking at your phone, somebody will be messaging you, you'll get an email in, you'll be doing... We, we do that. We, we're, we're becoming more instinctively inclined to be on more, you know, and it's harder to switch off. 
I've had to work really hard to switch off. Um, I'm really fortunate company. I mean, we, we believe in whole health, right? And like, like, obviously I work for a big corporate, so I don't want to go into promoting that, but I, I, it's made, it's forced me to learn more about what whole health is. You know, it's about, it's about your digital interaction. It's about your financial wellbeing. It's about your state of mind away from work. And I've recently, um, my boy's in, he, he, he loves the, the gym, right? He just like, he's five or six times away. And then he's a bit of a unit now. I, I, as I like to say him, I don't think he could take me, right? Because he's not for the streets, but I think him physically could lift me with one arm. But I thought, you know what? How cool would it be to go there with him? And he's teaching. He's, he's literally teaching me and I'm listening and he's coaching me and he's encouraging me. And I'm thinking, I don't want to do it. My shoulder's hurting and, and, and stuff like that. And it's a bit like that for me, the listening. But what I do know is when I actively listen and when I really take time to think about people saying, I almost always benefit, which makes you think, why don't you do it all the time? And I think it's just because we're always on. You know, I regularly get feedback thinking, saying to me, you will often hear it and then you'll be thinking of at least two steps down the road. And I've got to be mindful as a leader that even if I want to move at that pace, my job is, is to teach as well as lead. You know, I'd also learn as part of it. So the great thing for me in the job I'm in at the moment, Martin, is I get to learn from my team. So my, my, my leaders now are at sort of head of level, right? So I, these are senior people who understand how to do their job but need support and direction like everybody else. We all need a, a bit of that for time to time. But the hard bit is the stepping away. And, and I would say this, when I was thinking about the call, I was thinking, what, what worked for me? So keeping it simple always works, right? Because then I don't need to get confused. Yeah. Keeping it relevant. Now, like you've just seen there, right? I'm happy to divert. Let's talk about microeconomics or the localised franchising and stuff like that. I'm happy to go on some tangent because I'm just a naturally curious person. Um, and if you look at my reading material, you'd be like, you read that, but you read that? You're like, what's going on? Like, yeah, just, it was interesting. So I easily go on a tangent. So keeping it relevant is important, um, but keeping it purposeful, right? Otherwise, why are we doing it? You mm -hmm. know, and I, I find myself, and not just even in this job, but probably the last couple of jobs, say to people, I'm not turning up to that meeting. I'm like, well, we really need you. I mean, tell me specifically why. What is it you want from me? There's no agenda here. You know, and, and it's taken it for people, listening to people who said, I get so much more purposeful. I also had a yeah. boss, and I might have mentioned in the last one, where you asked him for an hour each time, he gave you half an hour. So like, make it work. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I think that was more because he went to do stuff he's on time than he was necessarily super efficient. But it focuses you in about what's what's the purpose and what's relevant and what's simple. Um, and then if you, if you tie that into when you first take that job where you're leading leaders for the first time is, I think most people, and certainly mine was, Martin, his default position is to micromanage it. To your point about that that particular individual who's a bit more introverted than you were, and I would definitely say I'm an extrovert. So if you you put the karaoke on, I don't need a drink. I'm up there, right? I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, he's, he's the mic. You might get it back later, you know. Despite whether I'm good, bad, or indifferent, I still think I'm brilliant, right? So so I, I'm that kind of guy. But just that that sort of ultimate desire for con command and control and being controlling your own destiny. When you start leading leaders, trying to get away from micromanaging is, is tough, right? I, I don't care what anybody says. I, I, I don't, I've i not met a lot of people who moved straight into the role and, yeah. and started empowering people to be able to make their own decisions and, and got comfortable with that quickly. I, I don't see it a lot, but I, I think it's fighting that of starting to trust people, trying to trust people that they might understand their teams better than you do, Martin, to your point. You know, and I, I, yeah. and I think particularly when I got to EE, I had 120 people with a small business area. So I didn't really understand the industry that much beyond I had a mobile phone. <laughs> and back then it was like, I, I, like, I had the Samsung D500 slider. That was a brilliant phone, you know, until you lose it in a taxi home after a works night out where you're drunk and then you find <laughs> out it cost you 500 quid with a contract, you know, um, and you have to take one for the team. But um. I really didn't know the industry. And I remember one time, one of the guys, a guy called Dave Gillis, who was just, just was brilliant for me in that business, he drew, he got me in a room, right, because I just didn't understand it. He was like, let me draw you a picture of how the network works. And I was just sitting there going, it's magic, I get it. See, up to that point, loads of people have tried to explain it to me. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I don't get yeah. it. I, I know how to manage people. I know what to do here. I know what I'm looking for. I don't get the network. And he's drawing me these pictures and he's showing me how the backhaul works. And I'm like, that's brilliant. You know, and I think, I needed that at that time because I was, I think particularly if you jump industry and you can see through my career journey, I've done it four or five times, not even once or mm. twice, four or five times, you know, I went, um, I went for driving a truck to, to work in insurance, to, to wider banking, to, to mobile, to water. I mean, water's 
not a sexy industry, it has to be said, but it's still different. Um, then Sky and different divisions of Sky now into healthcare. Every time I make that jump, I'm 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 a bit scared. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm very mindful, Martin, that I'm going to have to learn something I don't know. And the bit that's helped me now is go along as, right, okay, I know how to do the basic people stuff well. But I also know, and, and this is the bit I would give to anybody is, just give these leaders trust. Somebody gave them the job, right? If you if you yeah. decide later on, and it's happened to me, you decide later on that, you know what, I don't, I don't think you're pulling your weight and the support I'm giving you is not going to get you there. That's the other part of being a leader, the leaders pulling, mm. pulling, pulling the trigger, so to speak, on difficult decisions and not being scared of really challenging conversations with people who are intelligent enough to take you on, right? Because it's, it's easy to tell somebody something if you have the power to do it. Having a grown-up conversation with somebody saying, I, I don't think you've cut for this, right? You're, you're not doing it or you're not following it through or you're not making the business objective or you're not, you, you're not carrying the message. Because you and I both know as, as a leader that there are times where you will disagree with some elements, but you get on on, on board, right? Because fundamentally, that's the business decision. It's, it's the way to go. It's going to protect people in the long term. But within that, there can be some internal conflict. There can mm-hmm. be some some things you don't like with, but you carry the message, right? You don't go in and go, yeah, Big Joe made the decision. I don't yeah. know why I keep picking on Joe today. Is like, we Joe and <laughs> Big Joe, but I, I, like, <laughs> Big David made the decision up there. We David here's telling you that, I, but no, it's not my fault. And yes. we've both worked in environments where people don't carry the message in the offset. And that leads to wider disengagement in my, my experience in teams and across departments. Um, and, and I think that's, that's what I'd say is, if you're going to do it, make sure you've you, you've got the kudos to, to understand what you do, but trust the people around about you. Because when I trusted those guys, particularly in Greenock at the time, they'd done a brilliant job for me. You know, they, they really helped me understand the business. I trusted them to do what they did, and I gave them the support on the things that I thought I could add value on. And and that's when you start sort of navigating the way of I need to manage everything all the time, or, or it won't be a success. To being what is it need? Do they need me to be a cheerleader? Do they need me to be the data guy for a little bit? Do they need me to be the guy that goes into another room to those meetings we've just talked about and said, well, that tour isn't going to sit in this meeting, we're going to leave with this outcome because that's our purpose. And, and and bringing that together, it's it's a real it's a real jigsaw, Martin. You know, it's a real mm. um, opportunity to start putting it together. And I mean, you do it well. I mean, you can reap the rewards. You know, you can you can really pull it a, an amazing career out of it if that's what you want. I, I, can, I can remember distinctly uh, the penny dropping when because for a while I forgot just how difficult the team leader's job was and then are they hard it's hard (laughs) yes very hard and then I realized my role and I and I applied this I applied this question to pretty much everything to your point about what how do you portray a message or how do you how do you share company changes if you don't agree with them, what's what's your responsibility? But the, the line that I always used that's suddenly just hit me is, am I being helpful? Am I helping my team leaders manage their teams? Because again, another mistake I made, and it's a it's a it's a big one, is I still thought I, I still wanted to, not thought, I wanted to still uh, interact with advisors, agents. And often that undermined my team leaders because I would go to the floor, yeah, yeah. spend some time there, find out some problems that were happening and say, right, I'll sort that out. Rather, th- and it, it, it reduced the authority um, and autonomy and engagement of my, of my team leaders rather than trusting them and working with them to do the right thing by their team I would always be spending my time and I remember it came to a head really actually I with the team they were expressing some frustration at some of my more maverick sort of interactions with with their team that I made the agreement even if you're wrong I won't disagree with you like publicly with your team and I will stay away from going into like fix it like you know oh I can do that I can help um and I'll work with you to to do it and and I and that plus being helpful was you know I've come away from meetings and go 
if I'm a team leader now and my manager, which is me, is coming back and I'm going to tell them something, is it helpful? Do I need to tell them right now? And I started just thinking about my actions a lot more than I had done when I was a team leader, which is I was very much in the moment. But, you know, we all work in contact centres. We love that kind of fast pace, make a decision quick, think fast, act, act, act when I became a contact centre manager, managing team leaders, eventually, not straight away, but eventually I came, I became more considered. You know, I'd be thinking, right, I, how am I helpful? How do I be helpful? How do I, what's my responsibility as a leader in sharing messages? You know, and all of that kind of stuff. And it just, it, it, it gave me pause. And I think that's the biggest thing was I just paused a bit more. So before it was kind of, information react instantly <laughs> and that served me that served me well but now, then it was like info, information pause then react the massive point you make martin and i think absolutely I've, I've done exactly what you've done i don't worry about what they say just do this you know you're <laughs> yeah. like, after it you're thinking there's devastating you're like why did you do that I've, I've been working with that person for six months and you've just crushed it in 10 minutes and and like it, we, we can laugh about it but it, it was pretty problematic at the time yeah I, yeah I, I, I think there's there's a key thing there and and it's just getting you know you, you would love to be able to talk to most people like you would be having a pint down at the pub and you were on a nice sunny day and you're in there and you're like ah oh, that's a kill yeah. pint and you're just having a chat as you become more senior you you, you do need to moderate right and, and not mm. in the sense that you don't mm. want to be truthful or honest or carry the messages it's about being respectful to what people are doing now I've often seen myself in situations where I'll, because I'll, because I'll, I love spending time amongst people. I, I've never lost it. I don't want to lose it. I think it's it, there's too many senior teams across the world who've disconnected themselves for the front line. You know, I, I think. We well, I saw your about, I saw your post the other day when you're just back with a back with a team, right? You love it. I, like, it's just, I, I I've always loved it, right? And 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 look, I think I need to dig out my old work phone from when I was at Sky. Oh, uh, tech, sorry, I don't have an old work phone, Sky, just in case you think I've got an old work <laughs> phone. Um, I, I need to, because what I started doing was was creating almost a, a photographic bank of all my experiences with people, and I've got selfies mm -hmm. everywhere, right? So it becomes a bit narcissistic, I suppose, right? When you're like, yeah, look at me with people. But for me, it's a memory bank, Martin. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm so fortunate. I'm, I absolutely believe that I'm privileged to do what I want, and not in a whole hoity-toity way. I know that I've worked hard. I've earned the right to take this job, right? I've worked hard to get here. No shortcuts. I've took mm. the long route on a lot of things. Um, but in the same sense is that I, I feel that I've earned the right to do it. But what I've never, and I hope I never ever lose, is that I need to be connected to every aspect of what we do. I think if, if you want to be a leader in content, I believe you need to lead for the front, the middle, and the back. But to your point, you need to make sure you're not stepping on the toes of the people you're asking to do a great job for you by diminishing what they're, they're trying to, to do. I think what I find myself doing in, on these visits, whether it's out to meet the new starts or in a retail store or, or in bigger contact centres, is if I observe something that I think is not in the right space, um, I'll, I'll take it offline and have a chat with somebody saying, look, I don't want you to go mental on it because I, I want you just to go have a chat, have a look at it, understand the context of what happened. <laughs> And understand where we are with that person and, and then do it and most of the time people deal with that with the responsibility you ask them to martin but but i remember sitting in i better not name the company because I've, I've not even talked about the companies the way the conversations where we're just talking about helping leaders but even through my time in e and sky is there was one time right so I, i'm narrowing down the window is i i, I hadn't been long in a particular area and i sat down uh, and it's like this is such and such and i was like oh, okay i'm gonna to listen to your calls i've not heard much of these before and, and, and I like to see people work and see how the software works and how they press the button and how the conversational mm. flow goes and the rest of it. This guy's like, oh, I just need to go um, to, to get something. He puts the customer on hold. And I'm kind of sitting there, right? So he's got no real idea who I am because I'm not fully went into the hole. Yeah. This is what I'm not doing. And they were away 15 minutes to the point where I went, like, I can't think of the team. There's something wrong here with this guy. Was, you know. he, he went and played ping pong. You're you literally kidding. left the customer home. That, 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 and it's like, really? So needless to say, the feedback that came for that was a bit more instantaneous, Martin, because that's not yeah. okay, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I think in most occasions, to your point, pause, reflect, take it offline, understand, because the other bit is, is that whole, and, and I mean it as, as a self-reflection, is 
that bit where you think you know everything, <laughs> just because you've seen and done a lot of stuff, and and yeah. even now I don't know everything, right? I I don't, and I don't know people's circumstances, and 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 it serves me well not to assume because I am opinionated. I have an opinion on almost anything. Happy to talk about it any time and all that stuff. What I've learned is I don't always need to share it there and then. I I, I don't certainly want to diminish anything anybody's doing, and 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 I think. He was a great learning ground for me in that space in terms of accelerating through the career and sitting, watching people who'd done it brilliantly, but also watching people who perhaps didn't do it as brilliantly. And I've seen that as I went through the sort of kind of um, the, the rest of my career in the sky as well, where some people were just amazing at it, Martin, and, and, and I really respect it. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm amazing at it. I still have a, an impulse and a moment at times. And I also, I think you talked to it, and this is how I picked up on it, is I have an absolute advice monster. I have this, I actually genuinely want to help people, you know, um, but, but and I think we're talking about the same thing here is just because you think that's helping doesn't mean to say it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, the first thing about helping people is understanding that people want help, right? Yeah. So I think um, my, my, my sort of go-to place quite often is, is oh, let me help you. With it. And it's like, I just wanted to tell you, I needed somebody to speak to. And, and understanding that difference at times is quite valuable, isn't it? Um but it's definitely, and, and and I think, and I'm hopeful that that, that does add value when, we, when people listen to this about managing leaders, and, and that's the, that's the variance I'd say that there is is definitely and learning that and understanding how the mechanics of your business works. And before you know it, you end up doing what we've done, and you get 50 minutes in the bank. But so I don't forget to say it is the other thing I would say is absolutely if you're in that space where you start to lead leaders and get invited to these meetings we're talking about, go and speak to somebody and find out how it works. Mm, don't yeah. wait to find it find out yeah. who it is, make sure you manage your time well and, and, and you get effectiveness from it. And I'd say to anybody, don't go to anything you don't think adds value, you yeah. know, in terms of either your contribution or what you're going to learn from it, unless it's compulsory. You know, I, I, I don't like doing my mandatory tests every year for compliance rights. I don't like doing um, money laundering, right? but I know I need to do it because it's part yeah. of the thing. But yeah. you know what, you're not going to see me sitting for three years in a money, money laundering meeting for a bank, um, <laughs> because I feel like it, right? So, uh, you know, I think it's just just, just sort of splitting out those differences. But yeah, we, um, we, we're doing it. We're in a tangent there again, but I think all things been equal, watch for the advice monster, mindfulness of, of where you are and what you're doing and how it's interpreted. And you're probably in a situation like I've been as well as, oh, Martin said. Martin said yeah. it'd be okay. Or, oh yeah, when Martin was in the team, he was saying that we're going to give everybody a 15% wage rise. And you're like, that's yeah. not what I said. And, and almost to the point where you're recording your own meetings. <laughs> because you know what? The people problem, are going to take their own context. That happened loads. That's very astute of you. The problem was, I found, was I would always think, yeah, there's a... I can't remember saying that, but there was a high chance I did. Yeah. So, well, yeah. You know, that, that, that's it, one of those ones where you're like, <laughs> yeah, that sounds like something I'd say. Um, <laughs> uh, Sorry. Uh, and you get the phone call like a day later. David, see that meeting you were at um, when, yeah. when you'd such and such in the room? Did you say this? And I'm like, almost like that kid when, when your mum's caught you in your hand in a purse or something, you know, you're, you're trying yeah. to take a couple of clips. It's not me. <laughs> and, and to your point, I'm like, what did I say? And that's the other thing that you learn as you become a more experienced leader and, and you lead leaders is that the mental dexterity you need to show is different. You know, you need to be able to navigate. And then, then the more senior you become. Very true. You, you, you can you can be having that moment that you said the other day where I'm meeting the new hires, we're talking about what it's like just to join, and then I'm joining another meeting where we're talking about how we're going to spend the budget, and you're talking about millions of pounds, and it becomes very serious and deadpan and, and data focused very quickly. And the dexterity to move through that does take it does take time, you know. And I think people need to measure um, their own expectation of themselves. You don't just learn that; you mm -hmm. need to experience it. I feel. Um, to become good at it because, and, and you can ask people to take you along. I mean, certainly I did in my career, and particularly in EE, I'd ask people to take me along to meetings with clients or get me involved in stuff that typically wasn't in my field so that I understood what people went through and what it was like and what that, that, that was there. And in and, and, and this business as well, in healthcare, I'm getting involved in stuff just so I can learn more and more and, and, and mm. deepen my understanding. Um, it helps with that movement when you have to move through something that's like, one of your people's telling you that the 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 family relative die, and then you have to move into another meeting where somebody's talking to you about right. We we need to recruit thirty people 
to do such and yeah. such, you know. And, and, yeah. and that mental dexterity at a senior level is it takes a bit of muscle memory, you know, it takes that practice, that deliberate mm. practice to, mm. to, to really learn it. But I don't know, maybe that's why they call people like us seasoned, Martin. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's what seasoned means. You, but you I think do it a lot of know, times. Do you know what? I think in the same way that the, the podcast now is a virtual way of um I I had we I think we both had and you've talked about it in the first podcast. Lucky enough to work for people that took an interest and said, right, you know when I got that feedback, yep. my the director um, or head of site, I can't remember the title, but she didn't throw me under the bus. Mm -hmm. She she said you need to you need to appreciate there's elements to this job now that you. I don't like you you're not experienced at but actually if you do want to help your team this is the areas where the influence and the decisions are made and you need to be engaged you need to be prepared coming to meetings is part of your role yeah. you know you can't just spend it on the contact center floor here's what I recommend you do and it was go and observe this person they're really good at it and guess what I went to speak to another one of my peers and she was just prepared. She just yeah. looked at her calendar in advance and had notes about what she might want to talk about, things she might need to uh, be concerned about. Whereas I would just rock up. I would like fall yeah. into the room, you know, and go and hope my personality could carry me through it. Uh, <laughs> you know? Then you find out not everybody thinks your personality is as good as you think. And that's exactly. not exactly that same that me, right? I'm thinking, no, like, no, wouldn't they like it, me, right? <laughs> it, it, it applies to me as well. And it was... Um, again, to your, one of your earlier points around kind of that was a strength of mine, or so I thought, but it was overused. I, I just yeah. massively over overused yeah. it. And then once once I started to go, right, come on, get prepared. Not all of your time can be spent on the contact centre floor because you're missing out on helping your team because this is where decisions are being made and you're not adding your input. You're not adding your team's it's input. Great about feedback, Martin. You know, you're not being a representative of them because you're not prepared and it was you know a, a massive learning point for me massive look i i think you touch on something there that i would say again irrespective of your leadership position at the moment feedback with good context and purpose mm. makes a difference right so easily that leader could have said to you i really need you to show up and be present and, and participate right that's the simplified version isn't it and the temptation yeah, yeah. As a senior leader, is to just do it as quickly as effective as you can and move on. To your point, particularly in our industry, it's move, move, move. Mm. Whereas she's taking the time to help you understand the why, why mm. that's important, and what actually she's touching on the thing that tickles you the most in the sense of if you get this right, it benefits you and your team. And yeah. you're, that's what switches you on to. If she says to you, it benefits all the other business and never mind your team, you're probably going to switch off. And, yeah. and look, that's the wonderful thing about feedback. And I'm going to swear to use this analogy, but I was told uh, and feedback's really important as a leader, how you take it, how you give it. But feed, look, opinions are like assholes, right? Everybody's got <laughs> one, right? But but the reality hmm. with feedback and where I've probably got to a good space in it is, firstly, feedback is generally somebody's opinion of hmm. you. Hmm. Um, and there's some of that that's relevant to them. That is yeah. absolutely relevant to them. Some of it will be relevant to you, but not all of it. Early in my career, I took everybody's feedback to heart. Mm. I took everybody's opinion and tried to be a better person from using that. And the reality is you can because you can't yeah. be everything to everybody. Nor, mm. nor is everybody's feedback good. <laughs> right? yeah. And, and that's, yeah. that's the mistake you make early doors when you're learning is you think all feedback is good feedback. It's not. It's no. absolutely not. Some people are really poor at giving feedback. Sometimes I'm poor at giving feedback and sometimes I'm brilliant. You know, and sometimes I'm in the middle. You know, I, I've got it wrong often, you know, where I've tried to simplify and, and I've actually should have took the time or I've been moving at pace. I know I need to speak to somebody and I'm worried I'm not going to get to them. So I just try and get through it and it loses its impact. It loses its purpose. It, it, it loses my reason for doing it because some both of these kind of leave thinking, I'm, I'm thinking it's, it's, it's like a microwave dinner, right? It serves a mm. purpose, but mm. it doesn't get you where you're supposed to be. And, and, and I have at times not given anybody feedback because it was not going to add value. And I've also said, and I probably was naughty at the time, I remember sitting in a room 
and, and it was sort of the middle time in the way we grew up in my peers. So, like, you give me feedback if you want. I'm not going to end with it. That was probably the wrong thing to say, Martin, right? But I just, I'd get myself into that headspace where I thought the exercise, we were doing it for the sake of doing it. Mm. And I'm not interested in that, you know? So if yeah. you want to say something positive to me, and I did learn this um, in one of the courses that I took, is that I think there's feedback by definition is negative. It's a, and if it's done constructively, it's, it's a constructive criticism about what you do. Other than that, if you're saying something like, you know what, Martin, you're brilliant at that. I love what you do in, in terms of how you run your team, the energy you show, and, and this is the examples I've seen of doing it. That's positive affirmation. It's a different thing. Yeah. You know, and, and knowing yeah. the difference is important. And I mean, you, you and I have both heard, and we still hear it, and I don't correct people now because it becomes very intrinsic about how people think. It's like, yeah, I got some good feedback, and I'm like, oh, did you? There was a time when I used to tell people, I used to say, I used to say to people, man, I was like, do you mean positive affirmation? You know, because yeah. I was so fixed on my own opinion of it. But mm. I do think feedback constructively is a really powerful tool, but it needs to come with context, relevance, and purpose. Otherwise, it's just, it's no use. And as I say, that it belongs in the asshole category because it's not any good to anybody um, other than the person who uses it. <laughs> you know, so yeah. I think, um, I, I, I think... Mm. That's where I've kind of got to in it. And, and look, the power of it is just transformational, but it needs to be done right and it needs to touch on there. And, and I think the example you gave is, is just tremendous, right? It, that's lasted with you. I mean, yeah. we've, we've now spoke twice. Yeah. When we think about the things that we're trying to sort of kind of pass on, we're thinking about the people who have done that brilliant. They come to your mind, mm. don't they? Yeah, they and do. And that's the power of feedback where mm. it's been done that way with the right intent. You remember the person as well as the words. Mm. And that and that isn't that the great thing. It's a, and it's a it's a nice place to kind of draw this. Um, we're running out of time. We're going like to do, we're gonna have to do another one. <laughs> um, it is, yeah, but it's it's a nice place to to bring it to a conclusion because actually, all of this, whether team leader or contact centre manager or onwards, is um, the you have opportunities as leaders to produce memorable moments for people you know we're, we're we're talking about stuff that happened many years ago for us didn't it you know our, with our white yeah. hairs and um but it's still relevant it still helps us and it's because someone took the took the time someone invested in us and that's um that's exactly it i think David, I'd lo I love chatting to you. Uh, we are definitely going to have to do another one. And it's coming we'll up to holiday to, time. So. Yeah, we'll need to do, we'll need to, the next time you do an event somewhere, I'll need to get up and get down and, and, and it'd be yeah. great to sort of, kind of meet with some of the, I mean, look, the community you're building is brilliant. I, I think the bit of feedback I'd give everybody, don't try and listen to it in the gym, right? Your, your voice is too <laughs> soothing, Martin, right? So to me, you're trying to bump <laughs> iron, you don't need your nice gentle voice in. So tell me a little bit more about what happened. And you're like, yeah, I can't concentrate. I can't lift this and do that. You know, you need to get the dance music on for that. But I think yes, um, you do. I, it'd be great. I think what what I love about Get Out of Rap Martin is like mindedness of the community, but still differences of opinion and, and different reflections and experiences. Because yours and I are just two journeys, and and I think mm. I think I think you, you're you, I think you're about what 120 plus now. You're, you're just touching on that, is that right? On, yes, on, on correct. Podcasts. Yeah. Some people have been on it a couple of times, but the diversity of people you've had on the podcast sharing their experiences, and if people are really listening, and I've had people reach out saying I loved what you said or whatever, and yeah, there's a wee bit of your ego, but there's other bit thinking, well, oh, that's the purpose, right? Yeah. If, exactly. if five or six people take something and use a bit of that to improve themselves, and then 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 that's been the best time I've spent, right? And yeah, you're yeah. doing it, I think what you give to it, people, hopefully, uh, will just keep growing and it'll become what it is. I'm probably the only person using it on diesel, right? I think I'm the only guy who's just been stubborn enough not to give up diesel, <laughs> right? Um, but it, it, it's easily accessible. People should do it. They, and, and when it's on YouTube, they can see what the guitar's on yeah, as well. Yeah. Oh, that's the thing. But look, my, my pleasure to come on. Thank you for asking me. Um, we, we could... We could talk for a long, long time. We Whether could. everybody else loves it or not is the question, yeah. right? But <laughs> Who I cares? Think, um, yeah, let's live it right there. We'll, go, we'll just record that for our own, our own yeah. um, fun and, and, and entertainment. But yeah, well, I think um, anytime I can help with any of this stuff or, or, or anybody that's doing it, I think I'm working on a wee project, which hopefully I'll be able to sort of kind of launch at the end of the year. So maybe touch base there, yeah. see how we're doing. And if I get Not it too. over the line, I don't want to make too much of a promise, Martin, if I don't finish it. Um, I've been... I've been I wrote my first novel last year under a pseudonym. Wow. So, I, uh, well, you've not read it yet. 
but I think um, <laughs> if you're you editing, just you drop, say, well, dropping that sure. in at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and I've, I've sort of been doing a work thing and I'm, I'm working my way through it. That's that's part of the purpose of the LinkedIn share. I'm trying to work myself into a mindset of what do I want to share? How do I want to share it? What, what am I trying to get from it? What, otherwise, why write it? Um, yeah. But hopefully by the end of the year, I've got that there. So saying it publicly is is, is that other, it's it's the yeah. verbal version of thinking and ink, Martin. You know, I'm putting it out there. So I'm, I'm under More pressure. Power to I'm you. Myself under pressure. Yeah. So well, you've got you've listen, got one you. you've got one fan straight away. So I'm sure you'll have thank hundreds you. more. It's nine ninety nine. So, I can count on. <laughs> 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 you can bank that. Thanks, yeah, David. Thanks, man. Listen, have a great day. Speak soon. Bye bye. Yeah, you too, Steve. Bye bye.